you know, when you look at these controversial campaigns, some of them happen accidentally, some of them like Benetton with intent. Um, but, you know, mostly people think that celebrities do move the needle, right? And we certainly as an agency have done some tremendous things as it relates to celebrity marketing. I mean, a point, a great point um, in that case is the program that you uh, creative directed with Taylor Swift and Sony, um, Sony Electronics specifically. Um, in that instance, you really did build brand awareness, create emotional connection between Sony and Taylor's fan base and increased sales. You want to break down that celebrity marketing play um, a little bit and show how that was a safe play, no controversy and successful on both fronts, commerce and brand building? Yeah. So that, I guess let me start with the, the problem we were trying to solve, which uh, is frankly unsolvable because the world was moving away from small electronics our phones kind of were replacing the entire world of Sony Electronics except for televisions. And so the campaign was, the ask of us was, how can we generate interest and in sales in a dying category? Now, they didn't use that word, and we didn't go in and say it's a dying category, but the writing was on the wall. The iPhone had been out at that point. We knew what it was capable of at that point, and we could only imagine what it was going to become, and now it's exceeded it. But there were already cameras on our iPhones and they shot amazing photos and they were easily sendable. So that was the problem that Sony came to us with. And the world that we created for them, that the solution that we gave them was, let's add context to the interaction with your electronics. And let's not run away from kind of where, where everybody's at, but let's use the power of Taylor to take us there. So we looked at Taylor from a kind of very interesting perspective. As I was telling somebody this the other day that we gave her three different personas that we picked out of her. So it was the everyday girl, Taylor. It was the glamour girl going to the red carpet, Taylor. And it was the rock and roll girl, Taylor. And within one eight hour window, we called the campaign eight hours with Taylor. And within one eight hour window, we were going to show you those three personas and we we're going to align product with those three personas so that the camera that was super small and slick um, that went into the rock and roll theme. And that was the thing that fit inside of her little purse. And that's how she moved the world that way. Yeah. And the one that was a little bit bigger and could, it was connected to Wi-Fi and connect, connect to your phone. That was the everyday girl. And again, we're placing these, these lines for the consumer. But the idea is you're not just buying into a product, you're buying into the world that comes with it. And, you know, there's obviously nobody more powerful than her. And we've all seen what Taylor's grown into. Um, she was impressive. And I totally understand why she's the biggest star in the world, because she was impressive then. She's impressive now. She's always been impressive. And it's because she grasped the assignment. She came in saying, OK, what what can I do? And they were very tight with her brand, meaning that I couldn't bring in our New York fashion team to change her look. She basically wanted her team. Why did to you look. want to change Taylor's look? We did. We did. I felt <laughs> that I felt that awesome. she looked a little bit more fashionable. I felt that she didn't look edgy enough. All that is gone now. The girl looks amazing now. But back yeah. then she was still kind of half Nashville, half not Nashville. And it was a little bit of both. She was like kind of stepping out of that world into a new world. So for example, one of the three looks I'm still not a fan of. I'm like, God, I could have done that better. But that's what she wanted to wear. That's what they wanted to that's what they wanted to look like. But the campaign ended up being successful for those reasons in that we did those three personas. We aligned product with them. We created storylines storylines around each one of them. She was great on camera and the both the still and the video. And she spoke to she spoke to the concept and how we rolled it out was a variety of ways. We were not only talking to the regular consumer. We're also talking to professionals because they had also launched a super professional line of what you would call SLR cameras. And those cameras are still like competing with Canon on a day in, day out basis. You know, they have video built in and kind of the resolution quality. We went after the professional market with Taylor. We went after the consumer market with Taylor. We went after all sorts of kind of ancillary elements, like we did fundraisers and and placed her in places where her voice mattered to them, that she was there. And collectively, we made the products that we selected for that campaign, the number one selling SKUs across all of Sony Electronics for that year, again, because we provided context. It wasn't just somebody saying, buy this. It was somebody saying, I use this because of these reasons, and this is how it fits into my life. 
And then that person in that case was a spokesperson that resonated. And that's an example of a good spokesperson integration because I think we use them wisely. There's a lot of cases where it immediately comes off as, oh, this is a hired endorser and there's no emotional connection to the product and you can kind of tell. And I think in some of those cases, it can backfire using an endorser like that. 